Hello everybody. Here I am coming to you from <clears throat> work as I'm getting prepared to go. Uh, I thought I'd do a quick video. And uh, man, I just sound like a big complainer. But this whole situation has just spiraled out of control. And well, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. But back to the story. <clears throat> so first I have to offer my apologize to the my apology to this Doug guy. Because he was in fact a member of the military, or so I'm told. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. I have seen no proof from him or anybody else that he was other than that I was told that he was. Okay. <clears throat> I can absolutely 100% say he was not in the Special Forces, like he's been telling everybody. <clears throat> so, once again, I go to eat breakfast. I'm completely ignoring this guy. And he comes and he sits down at my table. And I get up and I leave. But before I can leave, he goes and leaves my, the table. I appreciated that. He was attempting to defuse a situation. Or draw attention to a situation. So, it's in the morning. I'm a little bit irate. And he starts talking about his exploits as a special forces operative in the United States military even though he doesn't know that the special forces in the US military are semi-special forces are the Rangers and the real special forces are the Green Berets he doesn't know this so I can't take it anymore I stand up and say you weren't in the, the army and I said it with a loud voice and he says, oh, I was discharged. And I told him the only thing you were discharged from was a mental hospital. And so the person who was working in the kitchen told both of us, the next one that says anything, they will be written up, which I don't even know what that means. But to save the peace, I left before I finished my breakfast and didn't say anything, even though he kept running his mouth. <clears throat> so, then I go, and of course, <clears throat> I have to have a meeting with uh, the number two pastor, Pastor Jeff, real nice fellow, and let me get tell you these, this, uh, these pastors, I mean, they've treated me nice, and I appreciate it. But all they're doing is playing good cop, bad cop. The good cop's trying to get uh, information in these situations by being good. And the bad cop is laying down the law if they don't get enough information, which is the head pastor is playing the bad cop. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the things that they're doing. <clears throat> So I have a meeting with him and, you know, it's uh, told my side of the story. Actually, I didn't tell my side of the story. I just told facts. So let's tabulate the score. There's probably about 16 incidences of Doug inciting an argument, one instance of him making uh, physical threats, and one instance of me inciting a riot. So, so then I thought the whole thing was taken care of. I just asked to have him stay away from me, <clears throat> but no, that wasn't enough for them or for Doug either. He had to complain to somebody higher up. So then I had to have a meeting with the bad cop. 
<clears throat> who for the second time said that I was completely wrong, even though I know uh, I wasn't. And, uh, well, the outcome was we should just stay away from each other. Uh, and I should probably just accept that. And, you know, I got what I want, but I don't know why I always have to end up looking like the bad person for the sake of peace. Why can't it go 50-50? Well, here's an idea. Why not label, put the label of bad person on the person that is the bad person? So anyway, when we, I was having this argument with Doug, I, I told him, tell me your, your job uh, through the official military terms, and he couldn't do it. So the head pastor, who I'll refer to as the bad cop in this instance, said that <laughs> he asked a 26-year veteran of the U.S. military what the terminology for your designation in the military was, which of course he wrongly quoted and gave me the, ter the terminology from the United States Air Force when Doug claimed he was in the Army and I gave the Army terminology. So then I was just curious myself and I went and I Google searched it and he didn't ask a 26 year old, a 26 year veteran. He asked the first half of the page of Google. And that was the, where he got his answer. If he would have scrolled down, he would have seen the correct answers. But, so here comes my conclusion from this. Okay. I don't need the help from people to advise me about God when truth is not at the forefront of their advice. However, I am in a situation where I need help from somebody. So from now on, I'm going to put my head down, do the absolute minimum like everybody else, do the absolute minimum, try to take the absolute most from them like everybody else, and when the time comes, I'm going to leave. Okay, that's how I'm going to deal with them. I'm not going to cause any more problems. I'm not going to go out of my way to help anybody anymore. I'm not going to try to make people laugh. I'm not going to try to diffuse situations. This way, I don't cause any situations. <clears throat> now, we were advised not to talk about this anymore. However, the other party <laughs> talks about everything. And I don't talk to anybody about it anymore. Uh, even the people that I call my friends, I told them I'm not discussing this. But Doug has decided to continue to talk about it and has somehow, after threatening me, and my friend Joe with violence painted us as a pair of bullies. So, yesterday at uh, dinner, my old adversary, we'll call him uh, for sake of uh, liability, which it looks like this situation could move into, we'll call him uh, Jer Jerry Sonnen. He advised me at dinner last night that if we don't leave Doug alone and stop picking on that poor soul, that, uh, well, he's going to have to do something about it. And why would he do this? I mean, he knows that me and my friend know secrets about him, but we don't tell. There's no purpose in it. We're not spiteful and we don't like to get people in trouble just for spite. But this man is a, a whoremonger who brought uh, prostitutes into 
the cold shelter and after people would leave, he would pay them for sex. We know this, we didn't tell anybody. Mm, but we have the proof, okay? So why would he take this risk? Well, for two reasons. The first reason is he's a complete idiot. And the second reason is, is because Mr. Doug is riding his nutsack and doing everything he's told to do. Wash clothes, pick up things, carry things for him, and everything. So Doug's like his little slave. Uh, which is funny because this uh, Jerry is also a racist. Uh, so, I'm just, things were going very well between me and this person. But of course, you know, to keep things going well, I was like, you know, giving them candy and things. I even took my cane because my legs hurt in the morning from arthritis and I have to use a cane now until the weather breaks and gave it to him so he could get in and out of his chair after he had his gallbladder taken out. So I suffered for a week for this guy, and this is the thanks I get. Well, <clears throat> there's two things that this man could be to me. He can either be a straight out asshole, self-serving asshole, which the old me would think, but the new me kind of thinks well, maybe he's a uh, associate of the uh, devil testing me. However, either way, I'm just going to keep my mouth closed, do the minimum, take the maximum, and get out of there in the beginning of October. And nobody's ever going to hear from me again. Because this is what the world has become. I can't speak for other countries, but in America, well, I can't speak for other countries, most Western countries. The world has become, the only truth in the world is the first half of the first page of Google. If you look at the political system, if you look at the social life, if you look at private life, that's all it is is uh, Google search results. So, I'm just going to fall in with the herd and worry about me. Uh, well, that's all I have for today. Uh, I'm sorry for ranting, but <laughs> honestly, any other time, well, I'm thankful I'm in the situation I am now because any other time I'd probably be in jail by now. <clears throat> well, I hope everybody's doing fine. Uh, take care of yourselves. Keep your heads down. And uh, don't make waves unless you're ready to swim. And I'm not ready to swim. Please remember to like, subscribe comments, and if you have a few extra shekels, donate. And I hope to the person that's listening, who has been the relay between me and the uh, mission, that they'll please just keep this to themselves. Because as I said, don't want to make any more waves. Want to do the minimum. Want to get the maximum. And don't want any more problems. Have a good day, everybody.